morning, sweet friends, and how are you this fine day? Well, it's uh, winter here in uh, southeast Queensland, and I thought I'd show you around my winter garden and give you a quick update. So I'll do a quick tour of the garden and also harvest some veggies, and I'll also show you some future projects we're working on at the moment. My daughter Chloe hasn't let out the horses, so I'll just go and do that quickly. Okay, so firstly, in my cut flower garden, I've got some... Uh, sweet peas growing along here. I need to tie them to the to the trellis here. I just haven't had a chance yet. And I've got some ranunculus all the way along. They didn't all pop up, but I think I've got more than enough there to have some ranunculus bouquets in the spring. All this wood chip is new. And we've put up the edging to stop the water washing it all away. Now two weeks ago or so, I put some see, um, some potatoes in the ground here. And they have started to pop up, which is exciting. There you go, so this, I can see them in a few places. There's another one there. So hopefully, yeah, I'll get some potatoes. That would be awesome. This is our kitten Lola. She's not meant to be out, but she got out when I opened the door just before. This um, weed mat is new and it's UV stable. So learned how to burn the holes in it recently. We did the template up and we burnt all these holes and I was all excited and, and I planted out all my flower seedlings and I just realized I need a lot more um, plants to fill this bed so you definitely get a lot more plants in um, a smaller amount of space. I actually decided to plant some veggies down this end so I've got some broccoli and some baby broccoli and um, I don't know how well they're gonna go because I only just put them like a month ago but it would be awesome if they do produce something. Last year I had a little cottage garden which I did a video on and I actually decided to remove it. It was full of weeds eventually anyway and I had to pull it all out but I decided that I needed this pathway to drive my ride-on mower with the trailer on the back. I needed that thoroughfare to, to go past and it was just convenient to have that so I decided to put the two beds that I removed from the veggie garden over here and so I've got lots of different uh, flowers growing in here that hopefully will burst into bloom in spring. Hollyhocks, I don't think I've grown hollyhocks before but they're yeah, calendula and stock. I think there's everlasting daisies in there and snapdragons. Um, I think there's a bunny tail grass heads and um, some billy buttons and I think I also popped some chamomile so the chamomile's in there. I'll have to regrass this area because it's just all weeds and that buffalo grass um, doesn't want to grow back easily and as well along here because I accidentally killed too much grass off I think last year and it's all just weeds growing back. This garden has evolved a bit um, I always did have plants all in the ground uh, last year and I basically had to pull them all out. I get nutgrass here so the nutgrass just is, I can't control it very well. So I've decided just to have it all in pots, all my plants in pots and that way if I need to spray them I can and it's not going to affect the plants. So just a mixture of flowers some herbs, I have some veggies in these raised beds. I even put the raised beds on um, thick plastic to stop the nut grass growing through. Um, some roses, lavender, I just put a new um, lime tree in the back there. It actually was in the ground, it was drowning, so I had to take it out and I thought it was dead, but someone encouraged me just to put it in a pot. So hopefully it'll come back to life. Um, I've got some bulbs coming up so I'm excited 
to see them bloom in spring so it's hyacinth and um, daffodils so i've got one pot there and um, another pot over there yeah i really like this setup and i might actually um, paint some of the pots to make it some pretty pastel colors so i might do that today if i have time and then next time you see it you'll be able to see the see the difference hopefully it looks prettier and um, hopefully there's more things are blooming as well i did have a whole heap of lettuce growing in these beds and i just updated it because they were all bolting um, so i just got some rocket yesterday and um, mizuna i think that one that one's mizuna which i haven't really eaten before but um, i'm willing to try it so this is my veggie garden and I've made a few changes since my last video. In the front of my garden, I had two raised garden beds, which I had to remove because it got infested with nutgrass. Uh, in its place, I've put some lily pillies and I've actually put them along the fence line as well to give the garden a nice clean uh, border and I think it will make it look more attractive and maybe more formal. Uh, we've also put some weed mat down and added a bit more wood chip to the center because it all got washed away with all the rain we've been having. Now in these pots we've got, I bought a dwarf fig tree and it said it was happy in our pots. So we only just bought that recently at the um, Queensland Garden Expo and I can see I can see the um, sprouts, new greenery coming out. So I'm really excited for figs. I love figs. So, um, and then I just popped some uh, chamomile in the pot with it. Now these garlic I planted out in my last video, they're growing really well. Um, I'm really excited for an awesome harvest this year. And and these are the red red cabbages. So I put these in late because my seeds, I either ran out of seeds or the seeds I had were germinating. I can't remember now. But they've done really well. And you know what? They did not get attacked by any bugs at all. And, and they've just done so well. And, and these are just like plastic storage containers. And I think the soil's really good at the moment. I mean, these, have, these tubs are like a year old. And um, yeah, I just found they've done so well. And I think, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm making a conclusion here that the garlic has helped keep away the pests from the cabbages. So maybe I'm gonna try planting more garlic around the garden next year and see how that works out. Um, I need to fill one more pot here, but I've got some lavender and some more chamomile. Now these are the broad beans. <laughs> We got so much wind like the week before that they all started falling over and because they were so tall uh, that I've put some stakes in and I've tied them up. I've never grown broad beans before so I don't know how, how they actually grow their little beans. I'm excited to see if, if I could actually grow them here in the subtropics. So let me know if you live in the subtropics and you've had any luck with the broad beans. Okay, um, now over here is I sowed um, bolotti beans and I had just sowed them in the last video. Anyway, so yeah, I um, harvested the bolotti beans a few days ago. So here they are here. And the beans did get uh, a bit damp in the rain that we had. So um, I'm hoping all of them will be okay. So I'm just keeping an eye on them so I can store them properly and safely. And I've just re them all again. And um, yeah, I hope I can get some more beans before you know summer comes and it gets too hot. Uh, over here is my onions. Now these poor onions were all flopped over and didn't look that great. <laughs> They're all starting to um, sit more upright now um, because we've cleared some trees so it's let in a bit more sunlight and I think onions do need a good amount of sun to grow properly so hopefully I'll get something but if I don't it's just a learning experience so 
Um, our lemon tree has just been awesome. It's, we had so much fruit off it and just for a dwarf lemon tree, what a good producer. It's amazing how much fruit you can get from a little tree. Um, I asked my husband to trim it back and he kind of, yeah, attacked it. Um, but anyway, I'm sure it will spring back. Now this is our mulberry tree and this one also was just getting really big and I was happy for it to grow big but um, my husband decided to trim it as well. Um, but yeah, you can see all the new growth happening and little tiny mulberries. And my kids love the mulberries and um, yeah, last year I was harvesting them and saving them up in the freezer until I had enough to make jam. And um, yeah, my kids love them on their breakfast in the morning. So it's definitely a winner, Mulberry, and it does well here. And we're in clay soil, so and subtropics as well. So definitely a winner. Um, my raspberries, uh, I had to cut them back after summer last year because they were a little like half dead looking and the um i know the it's only year old canes that produce fruit so i don't think i'm gonna have any luck getting fruit off these plants which is kind of disappointing because i've had this plant a few years now and never actually had to never got to enjoy any raspberries we'll figure out what to do at a later stage if i get tired of waiting <laughs> um yeah all right over in this bed uh, we've got some Chinese cabbages, which are growing down the middle, some celery, and some climbing peas, which are um, probably not very happy in this area. Like, I think this bed needs to be doubled up so um, it's not hitting the clay soil underneath so quickly. Um, otherwise, I might just put it in a different area next year. And also got one kale here on the end. I don't eat that much kale. It grows so well though and this one's looking really healthy. Initially they were attacked by the pests and I had to pull out two others but this one's looking awesome. Um, and I have done a one whole harvest of the Chinese uh, cabbage so this was the remnants of the last cabbage I I um, harvested it was massive it wasn't quite ready when I harvested all the other ones but and I thought oh, I wasn't gonna head up but it was massive and it's sitting in the fridge and um, I'll pull it out eventually and um, yeah it's just a pain I've got a space for a seedling and no seedling so anyway, um, now with the cabbages um, they're getting a little bit munched on at the moment, but the beginning of this um, this season, the pests were just horrendous, and I just was not organised enough to spray them with BT. So I think with a lot of my plants in the garden around that time, it's probably um, better just to put the netting on it um, because I'm just yeah not quick enough when it comes to those white cabbage moss. Um, and also grasshoppers too. So yeah, I think I might just remember, try and remember that next year and um, yeah, make some changes. Okay, this is my uh, baby broccoli, um, which also had a rough start till it got attacked by lots of pests, um, but it is doing so well. So we just, you know, snap off the, um, the little stalks there and you know you can uh, gather enough that makes up pretty much one one head of broccoli and i've i um yeah i've had more success with this and that's why i've sort of stuck to growing baby broccoli than trying to grow the normal normal broccoli um but yeah i'm gonna try again over in the other market row and i've got some carrots here they're just the normal orange carrots um and some purple carrots there and this is my lettuce bed which I've just um yeah just grabbed some seedlings from bunnies yesterday to yeah pop in so the mizuna and the rocket and that's just my leftover lettuce um my tomatoes have not been a success this winter 
um, we had a lot of rain in autumn so I think I had uh, 10 plants in here all up so only three survived very frustrating um, so they basically got drowned by all the rain and I put some more seedlings in here but you know I think they're just too cold to get growing at the moment um, but I'll just keep trying I've got some fruit on there but um, I think they also need to be bagged or so they don't get hit by the pests so over here I've got some yeah I've popped some cherry tomatoes in cherry tomatoes I think are a lot more resilient so I think I'll definitely include cherry tomatoes each time I plant tomatoes because yeah they don't get hit by the pest as much um, and this is my um, blueberry so you can see it's just starting to get some new growth on it so I have fed it it's not a very big producer and I probably need a lot more plants to get anything substantial out of it I've also bought a new um, this is a persimmon and it is yeah, I got that at the um, Queensland Garden Expo in Nambour so um, yeah I've just planted it in the pot so it's happy to go in a pot so we'll see how it goes so along the bottom here got all the lily pillies I've had to put some drainage in here because we get a bit of overflow from the house come down here and it gets a bit boggy um, I've put some tigerella in these pots but I don't know how they're going to go but I still, if they grow up I can put them up over this trellis and I've got the bird bath here which the birds actually use um, this is my garlic that I planted in the last video that I made um, and it's doing really well I did have a um, cheeky creature of some sort come and eat it so my elephant garlic has only just started really to get going but you can see uh, I, it got they ate it off at the base and I think one over here just got completely eaten right down to the bottom <laughs> um, I think it's trying to recover I don't know how that's going to go but anyway most of them look pretty good I thought they only attacked the uh, elephant garlic but they got one of the um, my normal garlics as well so this one here got completely munched off at the base so you can see it sprouting up there as well so hopefully awesome harvest come October November here is my silver beet which is not that great I definitely had bigger leaves growing in the back my back raised beds last year so I don't know whether it's the soil or the location but they did get eaten like crazy by grasshoppers at the beginning of the season so and I do have some new seedlings to pop in so I'll do that as well maybe today and um, these are my beetroot and um, the name of it is um, I'll pop it on the screen because I'm not brave enough to try and remember how to say it <laughs> Um, but they're the ones with the um, the red and the white bands so they're looking pretty big so I might harvest them and pop some new seeds in uh, here's some more red cabbage and these guys got um, attacked by the pest really bad and that's why I think the garlic really helps to keep away the pests so yeah, but they're really covering now and I've fed them a few times with some seaweed fertilizer. And these ones is the bok choy. They're all looking lovely. Some were bolting, but I think maybe it was when it was really cold. Um, and they were getting attacked by pests really bad too. And that's why I decided to put the netting on. And it's made my job a little bit easier. Don't have to keep spraying BT. Uh, <laughs> These are sugar snap peas and they've, we had some really strong wind I think last week or the week before and they were getting really tall and of course they all just got knocked around. I tried to tidy it up <laughs> and 
these there's some snow snow peas on this side yeah a bit messy looking and I definitely need um I'm thinking to put up a more of an arch next year so they can grow up and over and um yeah that'll stop it from like falling over at the top because yeah I just don't have star pickets tall enough to to keep going up and yeah okay so we might go for a little walk up the back and then we we'll, might have us some food okay so up the back here got some future projects happening so okay so in this area we have a fire pit that's in the middle <laughs> and we've had to make a few other piles now because we've had a bit of um, trimming going on with the hedges now this whole back area here is um, was a lot of um, rubbishy sort of trees and I really want to just get the sun like clear it enough so the sun can come through so this area here is nice and close to the house I want to be able to clear it all and smooth it out and basically put in another garden where I can grow um, veggies and um, in the raised raised beds and possibly have a greenhouse up here one not a greenhouse a shade house that will protect like tomatoes and anything else that gets knocked around by too much rain um, from the elements and so yeah potentially have more productive crops um, so it's a bit messy at the moment um, but yeah my hubby had a few weeks off work and so he's been yeah trimming it all up we've got a gardener that's going to come out hopefully once a week so he's going to help us clear it all too yeah we've got a few citrus trees in here that basically didn't see any sunshine before so hopefully clearing those trees um, they will get a bit more sun so here I am just harvesting the beetroot that I showed you earlier it is large enough now to pick and after I um, clear this bed I'm gonna pop some new beetroot seeds in the ground so I'll do that quickly as well my seaweed fertilizer got a few silver beet here, rainbow chard. So I'm just going to fill the gaps in with my other silver beet and get them going. the gaps there so I've got one two three and I've just watered them in with some liquid fertilizer let's go harvest some other things 
All right, let's do some snow peas. I just um, go through and find a nice big stems and just cut them at the base so the plant just keeps growing. Space to grow, but basically just go down and find one that's nice and and thick on top, and pull it out and hope that it's a decent size. <laughs> Although maybe not like that. <laughs> oh, look at that! worth thinning them next time. Very, very squished. It's a little bit better. There you go. That'll do for a drink this morning. Alright, I'm gonna get some of this broccoli. Baby broccoli. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Just like a head of broccoli. And it's so much easier to grow. <laughs> now I might get some kale. Let's get the lower leaves. I don't need that much. all right so i've got my basket of food here thanks for joining me in the garden today i hope you got something out of it and it inspired you to uh, either start growing a garden or um, you know just keep going especially with all the wet weather we've had it's um, been quite tricky to uh, navigate and um, keep the plants happy in the garden um, but i'm sure that the you know, these challenges just help us learn and um, we can share what we learn um, with other people and um, yeah, grow together. Um, I'm just going to be washing all my beetroot here and then I'm going to uh, make a juice for my breakfast this morning. And um, yeah, I'll keep you updated. Hopefully the garden will look um, nice enough to share and the weather won't be as horrible. Um, and yeah, and hopefully it'll come to life in spring and there'll be lots of beautiful flowers to share with you all as well. And um, I look forward to seeing you next time and um, until then, take care and God bless.